Hey, uh, quick interest peel for those of you who care. I know I said in my last video that my next video, i.e. this one, would be on the Curse of the Colonel. Well, what was originally going to be a 15-minute video going, huh, lol, no curse, hunchin' bad, turned into a 30-minute diatribe on the sheer incompetence of the late 80s, early 90s Tigers teams and how that basically handicapped them for the next decade. Uh, and I feel that that video needs a lot more work, a lot more polish, and it's coming at some point, but it needs to be written better and organized better. So that's why you're getting this one. Thanks for understanding. On with the video. The Japan series is the pinnacle of Japanese baseball. The best teams from Central League and Pacific League go at it for the coveted title of the best team in the nation. But for most of the last decade, it's been a bit of a joke. The SoftBank Hawks are just too good, and even winning one game against them it's considered a great achievement. In 2020, the Yamiuri Giants got absolutely trucked by the Hawks, who went on to win their fourth straight title and their sixth in seven years. It just piled on the embarrassment for Central League whose representative hasn't won a title since the Giants beat the Fighters in 2012. Last year was a complete and utter annihilation, with the final score being 26-4, as the Hawks swept aside a befuddled Giants squad who couldn't play at home or get their offense going. However, despite how much of a beatdown that was, it wasn't the worst in Japan series history. For that, we have to go back to 2005, where what was supposed to be a Japan series for the ages turned into an embarrassing beatdown that lives through the annals of Japanese baseball history as the biggest mismatch we've ever seen. First though, context. Every good story starts with context. In 2005, NPB was coming off of a very close shape. The merger between the Oryx Blue Wave and Kintetsu Buffaloes had threatened the very makeup of the league, and it might not have been the only merger on the table. According to sources close to both clubs, the Chiba Lote Marines and the Fukuoka Daiei Hawks had also been in early discussions about a possible merger. Two of the richest teams, the Seibu Lions and Yamiri Giants were also proposing a unified league structure, but the rest of Central League thoroughly rejected the idea, as did major political figures and about 74% of fans polled on the issue. So it didn't happen, and SoftBank ended up buying the Hawks off Daiei. After a failed bid to purchase the Buffaloes by noted money launderer Takafumi Hori, the Buffaloes would die in all but name and the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles would be born, getting the cast-offs from the merger as well as a few disgruntled Buffalo stars, most notably Hisashi Ibukuma. And yes, like I stated in my Buffaloes video, this will get its own video because it is a huge topic with a lot of ramifications. But back to the story. So, the Chibalote Marines would go into this new season with a massive chip on their shoulder as did their manager, Bobby Valentine. This was actually Valentine's second stint as manager, the first being a tumultuous 1995 where he led the Marines to a surprise second place finish, despite clashing heavily with noted asshole and general manager Tatsuro Hiroka. He'd since lead the New York Mets to the World Series in 2000, where they would lose to their brothers in the Bronx. Here, he'd also clashed with their GM, Steve Phillips, and that led to his firing in 2002. So, Bobby was obviously a guy who could get you results, but he liked to do things his own way. His influence had allowed the Marines to grab two of his former players, Matt Franco and Benny Agbayani. After barely missing out on the playoffs the previous year, Valentine was hungry for more. 
The 2005 Marines sported Pacific League's best offense. Tomoya Satazaki, Kazuya Fukura, Koichi Hori, Toshiaki Imae, Tsuyoshi Nishioka, and an outfield of Franco, Saburo Omura, and Beniag Bayani, as well as Korean DH Sung Yuk Lee. Their offense was strong, but more importantly, balanced. And their pitching was even stronger. Super Submariner Shin Watanabe, Dan Serafini, and Shingo Ono all put up sub-3 ERAs, something no Marines pitcher had done since Nate Minchie in 2002, while longtime relievers Yasuhiko Yaota and Masahide Kobayashi locked down the bullpen. All in all, 10 Marines would be named to the All-Star team, 5 would win gold gloves, and 4 would be named to the best 9. Despite their offense, defense, and pitching being far better on paper, They'd still finish second to the Hawks and would have to face the defending Japan Series champions, the Seibu Lions, in the first round. In two pitchers duels, they'd take out the Lions 2-1 and 3-1. On to face the Hawks in a five-game set. All five, on the road, at Fukuoka Dome. Look, they were still trying to figure out how this whole playoff system would work at this point. I honestly don't blame them. Fukuoka ni ikimashou! Had PL gotten their way, these two teams may have merged. Instead, they played an intense five-game series, with games two through five decided by a single run. In the end, the Marines crawled their way to a comeback 3-2 win in game five, and it was on to the Japan series. Now, given my intro spiel about how this was going to be a beatdown, you might expect the team they faced to be some team that squeaked into the playoffs and had their luck run out. Well, no. First off, Central League didn't adopt the playoff system until 2007, and secondly, the 2005 Hanshin Tigers were really, really good. Tigers legend Akinobu Okada commanded a ship that also featured a strong offense, although that was largely on the backs of five players. The 40 home run, 1000 OPS bat of Tomoaki Kanemoto, Makoto Imaoka's 147 RBI, good for third all time, as well as Andy Sheets, current Tigers manager Akihiro Yano, and Norihiro Akahoshi. Their offense was nowhere near as balanced as the Marines, but it was arguably more potent. On the other hand, it might be a little bit easier to shut down. On the pitching side, veteran ace Tsuyoshi Shimiyanagi would have ultimately the best year of his lengthy career, joined by Shinobu Fukuhara, Kei Igawa, Yuya Ando, and Naohisa Sugiyama. All in all, their starters had a combined ERA of 3.38 and a combined FIP of 4.02. Their bullpen was also lights out. Kyuji Fujikawa, Jeff Williams, Kentaro Hashimoto, Hidetaka Egusa, and closer Tomoyuki Kubota formed the league's best bullpen. Seven Tigers would be All-Stars, three would win Gold Gloves, and four would be named to the CL Best Nine. And unlike their counterparts, they cruised to the Central League pennant and wouldn't have to play a single playoff game. So, looking at this series on paper, you'd expect it to be a hard-fought, balanced, amazing series. Two teams that led their leagues by miles in all of offensive and defensive categories. So how the hell did this go so wrong? Well, let's transport ourselves to Chiba Marine Stadium on October 22nd, 2005. Kei Igawa versus Naoyuki Shimizu. Comedian Matthew Minami threw out the ceremonial first pitch. A sure sign of things to come. Norihiro Akahoshi walked to lead off the game. And Andy Sheets singled to put two runners on base. But Kanemoto grounded into a double play. It's the Marines' turn now. And after Nishioka went the distance but ultimately struck out, 
陣最後は力のあるストレート In came Imae And on a 2-1 count He did this ご覧のように左を打っている今へ思い切り振っていった黄色で奪ったレフトスタンド阪神タイガースファンのレフトスタンドにホームランを打ち込んでいきました One nothing Marines Kazuya Fukura then doubled down the left field line But it was all for naught as Igawa got out of the inning. That would be it for scoring until the fifth, when Hanshin finally tied the game on a sack fly from Atsushi Fujimoto. Igawa was pitching lights out up to this point, with 7Ks through 4 innings. Sure, Imae and Agbayani were both 2 for 2 on the night, but this was still looking like what everyone expected it was going to look like a low scoring pitcher's duel, with runs being a lucky commodity. As the fog started to roll in, Tadashi Watanabe lit off the bottom of the fifth with a single. Then, Nishioka dropped down a bunt single. Up came Imae. Who cranked an RBI double to put runners on second and third? Then Saburo brought them all home with this double. So much for that pitcher's duel narrative. 4 1 Marines. All the Tigers could muster in the top of the six was a double from Andy Sheets. As the inning ended with a deep fly into Saburo's glove. Igawa went out to finish what he'd started. He got Benning to pop out. And then up came s a m y a p Lee, who'd already struck out twice. Any hope of a hat trick would be dashed when Lotte's Korean slugger took this full count pitch into the right field stands. Five one Marines. It was now desperation time. Fog was starting to blanket the field, largely being deflected in off the scoreboard. And if the Tigers didn't do anything, it could be all for naught. Shimizu struck out Hiyama, then Kataoka, and then finally Yano flew out. Bottom of the inning. Out with Igawa, in with Kentaro Hashimoto. Leading off is Imai, again. At least this time it was just a single. Fukura added a single of his own. Before Saburo flew out. Okay, that's a start. Tomoya Satazaki was up next. He was 0 for 3. Surely, Hashimoto's got this. Tataka, Satozaki, 
楽思い切りのいいサブザキがレフトスタンドに入りました I take that back OK here's Franco He's also over three. Let's regroup and Franco got a single. So, Franco, ah, no, it's up! Here we go, Chibarotte Marines, Senpas Zay Yanda! Kizukeba hit 14 home. Who's up next? Agbayani? You, you know, I just played the clip. And with that, it was over. The fog was way too thick, it was getting too dangerous, and it was an absolute blowout. It was time they called this one. Game one ends in the seventh with a score of 10 to 1. Now, if you were a Hanjin fan at the time, or a player, Or management, or a person with a brain, you'd think this would be time to hit the panic button and just declare the season over, right? Well, not so fast. There had been times where a team had won the Japan series despite getting blown out in game one. In 1958, the Nishitetsu Lions had won the Japan series despite losing game one 9 2. In 1961, the Giants lost 6 0 to the Hawks in game one, but still won the series. Dubiously. In 1994, the Lions thrashed the Giants 11 0 in game one, but still lost the series in six. So, it could be done. Throw in the weather conditions, and you could just throw this game out as a freak anomaly. At least that's what they'd hoped. On to game two. Game two Shun Watanabe vs. Yuya Ando. After the Tigers went down 1 2 3 in the first, Nishioka stepped up to the plate and roped a double into right. Second baseman Hisao Heiuchi dropped down a bunt to advance him to third, and he'd eventually score when Imaoka botched this throw on what should have been an inning ending ground out. Bad luck. 1 0 Marines. After another 1 2 3 inning at the top of the frame, Lee would lead off the bottom of the inning and drew a walk. Imae then hit a single to advance Lee to third. Hashimoto would then ground into a double play, which scored Lee. Two nothing Marines. And from there, it'd be very quiet for the next three frames. Hanshin tried to get rallies going in the third and the fifth. But both would be snuffed out. Meanwhile, Ando had gotten his act together and he only gave up a single hit in the intervening innings. Momentum was on the Tigers' side, and if they could shut down the Marines in the bottom of the sixth, there was a good chance they could get another rally going with the heart of their order coming up. Ando led off the bottom of the sixth by striking out Heiuchi. A good start. Then Sadazaki singled to left. In comes Saburo, who does this. Next up, Matt Franco. Who does this?
Who's next? Benny Ogbayani? And that ended Ando's night. In came Hirotake Egusa. The first batter he'd face? Sung Yup Lee. Just roll the footage. Seven nothing Marines. Imae would hit another single after this, but Egusa would get out of the inning. What was once a close game had now been blown wide open, and the Tigers were thoroughly crushed mentally. For the next two innings, not a single Tiger would hit a ball out of the infield. They had been broken. But it wasn't enough. In the bottom of the 8th, Akira Otsuka would be brought in to pinch hit for Franco, and he'd single to left. <laughs> then he stole second. <laughs> then third. <laughs> Then he stole home on a wild pitch while Agbayani drew a walk. Lee grounded out, and up came Imae. Casually, 3 for 3 on the night, and 7 for 7 in the series. Make that 4 for 4 and 8 for 8 with an RBI single. At least Hashimoto's up next. Except he cranked a triple to score Imae. Ten nothing Marines. Game two would end that way with a whimper as Andy Sheets flew out to Saburo. So that's two blowouts in a row, but hey, on the upside, we're going back to Koshin. Hanshin's gonna be on home soil, and that should probably help, right? Well, let's see how game three went. Also, quick apologies in advance, I had access to the full broadcast for game one and game two. I'm working off highlights for game three and four. So if something is off or I didn't describe something exactly as it happened, blame Central League. I'm just going off what the box score and the highlights tell me. So, tangent over, back to the story. Game three would see the wily veteran Siyoshi Shimo Yanagi take on Hiroyuki Kobayashi. After a first inning that only produced a double from Toratani, <laughs> Saburo led off the second with a double to right. And still third, scoring on an Agbayani sack fly. One nothing Marines. But unlike previous games, the Tigers came right back the next inning. Hiyama and Yano got on with a single and walk respectively. And after a couple of ground outs, Hiyama would score to tie the game one off. Hiyama 
The third inning was uneventful, but in the fourth, Koichi Hori led it off with a single. Then Fukura followed it up with one of his own. Before Saburo grounded into what should have been a double play. Instead, he was called safe at first. Yeah. Next up is Imae. Yes, him again. Did I forget to mention he's only 22? Well, he'd hit a single that drove in Fukura. Well, Nachiba was up 3 1. How did the Tigers respond? Was that you say? Four straight ground outs? Well, I'll be damned. On the flip side, the Marines were also held up the board, especially with Fujikawa entering the game. So, after this brief era of competent pitching and defense, let's transfer ourselves to the top of the seventh. Fujikawa would be left out there, and Sarazaki would reach base on a Toritani error. Then, Imae cranked a double for what would be his tenth hit of the series. Frank Hill would be brought in to pinch hit for Otsuka, and Fujikawa decided he wanted nothing to do with him. Walking the bases loaded. Hashimoto then came up to hit for the pitcher and hit a two-run single that scored Satezaki and Imae. And that'd be it for Fujikawa. In came Sajikihara. The first batter he'd face would be Nishioka. Who hit a single? He then walked Hori to load the bases, and Fukura unloaded them, lining this grand slam into the right field stands. Another bad inning, another broken Hanshin team, and another 10-1 finish. Oddly enough, Game 4 was the only game that resembled competent baseball from both sides throughout. And despite a Lee homer in the top of the second, Hanshin starter Sugiyama didn't let the game get away from him. In fact, Lee would drive in all three of Chiba's runs that game, as he plated Franco on this RBI double in the fourth. 
ズでは井川それから江草からホームランを打っていますあ初球から来た3点目が千葉ロッテマリーンズまたまたイースインのこのバットで入りましたタイムリーツーベース2対0から点を取ったのが優勝に日本一に王手千葉ロッテマリーンズ Still, Bobby was really quick to hook Dan Serafini as soon as Hanshin got to him in the sixth. And the battle of the bullpens would end when Kobayashi threw this 1 2 splitter to Fujimoto. Game Series Marines. So, how the hell did this happen? Two really good teams line up against each other, and one demolishes the other. How did the Marines do it? Well, there are three reasons why this happened. The first was taking advantage of Okada's stubbornness and adapting to his starters. Let's take a look at the first two games. See where the Marines pull away? What's the common thread? It's the third time through the batting order. Remember when Kevin Cash yanked Blake Snell in the 2020 World Series and everyone got really mad at him for it? Well, this is what he was trying to avoid. In game one, despite that Imae Homer, Igawa was in a groove. And that all fell apart the third time through the order. Why? Chiba's hitters could calibrate to what he was throwing. Lee struck out the first two times facing Igawa, but Igawa threw the book at him. So Lee could figure out what he threw and how he threw it. And he took him deep the third time. Same thing with Ando in game two. First time through the order, a little shaky, but okay. Second time through the order, solid. Third time through the order, yeesh. To Okada's credit, he did wise up to it in game three, but that led to a second issue the bullpen. But wait, I hear you cry. I thought you said their bullpen was fantastic. Yes. When it was used correctly. Half of Okada's decisions with his bullpen in this Japan series looked like he was just chucking stuff at the wall and seeing what stuck. Game one could be excused. By the bottom of the seventh, the fog was really bad. There was nothing that could be done about that. It was just a mess. But in game two, Okada just kind of chucks Hirotaka Egusa out there into a dirty inning to go lefty on lefty with s o n g y u p Lee, which would be fine. Egusa was really good at limiting home runs. But so was Jeff Williams, their other lefty arm. Who was better than Egusa in pretty much every stat under the sun and was often used in more high leverage situations? You know, like the one they were in? <laughs> so why not bring in Williams to end the inning and then throw at Egusa to end the game? And the decision making gets worse. By far, their best reliever was Kyuji Fujikawa. In his 80 appearances so far, he'd barely gone past one inning in any of them. In game three, he pitched a beautiful top of the sixth, silencing three of the Marines' best hitters, leaving everything out there on the field. So, what are you gonna do? Leave him out there. That worked out well, didn't it? So, now, another high leverage situation. Who's on the mound? Sakijihara, their worst reliever. Yeah, that ended predictably. Game four was the only time we saw proper bullpen management, which included finally using Williams, your second best reliever, and you used him for two thirds of an inning. What the hell, man? Despite leaving Fujikawa out there for two innings again, his pitch count wasn't nearly as high and they got away with it. But that doesn't solve the last problem offense. 
As you can imagine, the best offense in Central League scoring a grand total of a run per game was kind of jarring. Remember what I said when I introduced them and I said the Tigers would be easier to shut down? Well, guess what happened? Kanemoto, Imaoka, Sheets, Yano, and Toritani were held to a collective 239, 271, 269 over the course of the series. That's a 540 OPS. The only member of the squad to get a hit in all four games was Yano, and they didn't make any kind of meaningful offensive impact until game four. It was obvious that the Marines had known coming in that shutting these five guys down was key to the series, and they did. A team with a collective 403 extra base hits all season was limited to just two. A double from Toratani and a double from Sheets. Did I mention that Koshien and Marine Stadium are two of the smaller parks in NPB? A lot of Valentine's pitching decisions and defensive matchups were set with these five in mind. And it worked. Oh, there's one more thing, sir. There was actually a fourth blunder Okada made. Games one and two of the series used a DH. So who did he use? The 700 OPS bat of fourth outfielder Shane Spencer? No, that would be too logical. Let's use third string first baseman Atsushi Kataoka. Just look at the numbers, man. What? And that, in short, is the story of the 2005 Japan series. A tactical spanking on nearly every level. It made Valentine into an absolute legend. Given the fact that this team had spent multiple decades as a team with barely any fans who nobody wanted to play for, they were definitely going to relish in this moment. Oh yeah, they fired Bobby three years later and it caused such a rift in the fan base that got half their Owen Don banned for life. But that's another story for another time. はい。なんですか、ステリオのゲームがないんですよね。1試合1試合真剣勝負なんですよね。ま、昨年もそうでした。今年もそうでしたが、田島さん。はい。ま、言葉は良くないんですが、消化ゲームと言いましょうか。は